Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do my October 2019 manga haul. I'm going to start off with two movies that I bought, um, one of which is anime and one is not anime but slightly related. First, I got Big Fish and Begonia on Blu-ray. This is a Chinese film, uh, animated film, really, really beautiful about... Um, the consequences of messing with life and death uh, and it's set in this really beautiful world that exists uh, underneath our ocean so like our ocean is their sky or the bottom of our ocean is their sky and they kind of are sort of m have these magical powers or so and I recommend just going and watching the trailer. It was a really beautiful movie. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm so glad I found it used. Um, still paid quite a bit for it because it's a new film. Only came out, I think, in 2018 or something. Uh, and it is a Blu-ray. And it's it was really, really good. So I'm happy to have that. And then I also got Fireworks. I haven't watched this one yet. Uh, I've heard mixed reviews on it, but it's something I've been interested in checking out. So... I didn't know it actually had like a supernatural or sci-fi element to it. I had no idea. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. But I uh, haven't watched it yet, so I can't really say much about it other than I bought it. Next, I completed two series this month, or like continued and completed. Uh, that Blue Sky Veiling, this is volume three. It is now complete. This is a Viz uh, Shonen Eye series, really, really good. I will have a full series review of this series coming out very soon, so look out for that. But long and short of it is, if you like LGBT stories, go and pick this one up. It's a very cute high school story about coming out and accepting, sorry, accepting yourself and accepting other people, and really, really cute story for sure. And Volume 9 of Tokyo Terror Rainbow Girls. I've talked extensively about this series on my channel, so I'm not going to spend any more time on it. Again, there's a full series review of that one coming out as well. Next, finally got Volume 5 of Aohara Ride. I uh, love this shoujo series. Um, Ayo Saki Saka. I've talked a lot about her series on this channel as well. Um, yeah. Aohara Ride. Definitely one of my favorites. And then I also have Volume 7. Uh, I already owned Volume 6, so... Yeah. Next, one I was super excited for. We had Volume 13 of Ajin, Demi Human. Love the red cover. This is... I'm hoping we're coming to a close with this one soon. The action was great in this. We're in the final... What feels like the final kind of battle. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Really dark and um yeah it's it's focuses on a lot of heavy topics like terrorism and uh being different and what people will do to you if they're different if you're different um yeah it's quite creepy a lot of government conspiracy kind of stuff and and human experimentation and that kind of thing Next, Bungo Stray Dogs Volume 12 came out. Love Bungo Stray Dogs. Uh, another action, very character-driven story about various different crime organizations. Our main character is part of a detective agency, and they all have supernatural sort of powers. And then there's the mafia, as well as some American uh, crime organizations that get involved in these this kind of giant battle that's happening and lots of fun also got good you know comic relief moments that I enjoy next daytime shooting star volume two very very good series I enjoyed volume one more than this volume so I'm hoping I have volume three pre-ordered as well so I'm hoping that volume three picks it up again uh, I believe this one is 13 volumes long someone told me so I'm hoping that uh, the next few volumes are going to be better because I didn't enjoy Volume 2 as much as I liked Volume 1. Next, Volume 3 of Our Dreams at Dusk. We have one more volume. This volume in particular, uh, 
hit home. This one focused on uh, kind of dealing with people in your past who have come back and uh, are a bit of, like, it deals with, like, overzealous allies. Uh, yeah, it's very, very hard-hitting topic for sure, but really loving it. Cannot wait to read the final volume. Next, Shortcake Cake Volume 6. This one is getting much more into the romance. This series is not messing around. They're getting right to it. This is the one about the boarding house uh, with all the high school students. I really love it. The art is beautiful and lots of fun. Next, we have Volume 9 of Love at 14. This is, an, this is another series that I really love, and this volume in particular had a lot of really cute moments between some of my favorite couples, or my two favorite couples of the story. So I was very happy about that. If you like romance, this is a really cute one about... This is the main couple. I don't particularly care for them, but uh, it focuses on a lot of different couples as well, and they're all 14-year-olds, uh, or... They all involve a 14-year-old. There's some age gap situations happening here. But anyway, uh, and it's just the cute ridiculousness of being 14 and being in love. And it's really sweet and funny and charming. Hitori Ijime, My Hero, Volume 5. Really, really good volume. Beautiful cover art. And the story is picking up. We're getting a bit more into our relationship here between our the teacher and our main character, and a bit more into the side relationships as well between the other characters, uh, which is nice. And yeah, the story's much more easy to follow now than it was at the beginning. Next, volume four of O oh Maidens in our in your Savage Season. Sorry. This is the one about the literature literacy club and the girls who are kind of exploring the topic of sex. Uh, continues to be great. The characters in this are wonderful. Uh, the male characters in particular, I think, are... Um, I'm just really fascinated because it feels very realistic the way that this stuff is being portrayed. And it kind of harkens, I know these are high school students, but this harkens back to my middle school years. Uh, and I knew boys that behaved in this way, and I knew girls that behaved in this way, and it was just very fascinating to read because it really hits home. Um, very much a story about puberty. Next, we got volume five of Inside Mari. Uh, I'm still missing volume three, so I think I have one, two, four, and five right now. So, yeah. That's, I love Shuzo Oshimi, I love this series, so I'm happy to have it, and I just still need to pick up Volume 3. Next, I've got several volumes of Doro Hidoro, this one's Volume 8. This continues to be really cool, the story is progressing, um, and it's really excellent. I'm, you know, I hear lots of people kind of talk about it, but then at the same time, I don't hear enough people talking about it. I don't know. I think it's really, really cool and interesting and different. And the world building is just so excellent. Like, it's so immersive. When you're reading this, you are so deep into this setting because it really, really um, puts you in their shoes. Like, you can't... It's so dark, it's so, uh, like, sensory. You can just, or at least I can, I love this cover with the blue and the greenery there. Um, it's so sensory because you're, you're, like, I just feel gross when I read it in terms of I feel, like, like damp and, like, you're in, like, you could smell mold and everything just feels, like, very mildewy and gross. Because all these characters exist in a world like that, and you're so immersed in it. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I think I've read up to volume 
11, so I still need to read 12 and 13, and I know that there's like 23 of them in total, so I'm a bit, got 10 more volumes to pick up, but really enjoying it still. Then I got Ron in the Grey World Volume 4. Um, this one was pretty good. I didn't enjoy this volume as much, but that's just because this volume got much more into the fantasy uh, problem because the series is only seven volumes long. So, of course, they're going to be getting to the climax soon. Um, I preferred the more slice of life uh, funny moments, but uh, I understand that the story needs to get serious at some point. So, next, got the fourth Vizbig of Inuyasha. Love Inuyasha. It is classic, obviously, and it was something I grew up with, as, as did many other people. Um, so I'm collecting the Vizbigs so that I can enjoy the story once again for the many, many... I don't even know how many times I've consumed this story between the anime and the manga. But I figured that I should own it. Uh, so that I can not have to go to the library or, you know, deal with anything else and just be able to take it off my own shelf and read it. So, still got a long way to go. I think there's like 18 of these Vizbigs, so I have quite a ways to go still, as I only own up to volume 8, which is this one here. And there's Koga, who was my favorite character, my favorite anime character when I was a kid. Uh... He is no longer my favorite anime character, but still have a bit of nostalgia for him. And that's all the stuff that I was continuing. Now on to new series that I started, Drifting Classroom by Kazuo Umez. Um, this is the perfect edition, three in one volumes. This is a classic horror series that I have wanted for a very long time, but the singles are out of print. Uh, when they announced this one, I was super excited. It is very atmospheric and creepy and just everything I wanted it to be. I've never read it before, obviously, so uh, it met my expectations for sure. Highly recommend it. Cannot wait to read the next one. Um, yeah, super stoked. Next, another three-in-one omnibus. This is Levius. Uh, this is not flipped. I did some research because I was confused because Viz doesn't usually flip their manga. Um, and it also says right in the back of the volume, actually, this is not flipped. Do not be fooled. Uh, it was actually released in Japan from in the left to right reading direction. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's a story about, I think it's called mechanical martial arts or something like that. Uh, and it's these modified people who have modified their bodies with different weapons and mechanical shit, uh, and they fight in a MMA kind of style um, in what seems to be like a coliseum sort of situation. Uh, yeah, it's very fun. It's very steampunky. There's a lot of color pages. It doesn't really feel like manga in a way, and that's not just because of the reading direction, but I think that the art just feels very different from what you expect from manga, which is a nice kind of fresh perspective, I think. I really enjoyed it anyway. It's not something I normally would read, and I was actually quite surprised at how much I liked it. Next, we got Cats of the Louvre by Taiyo Matsumoto. Uh, really, really, really enjoyed Cats of the Louvre. I love Taiyo Matsumoto, and Viz always releases his works in these beautiful hardcovers. So, yeah, this one actually, I pre-ordered this in March. It came out in September. It went out of stock, so they didn't ship it to me. I am in Canada, and I buy most of my stuff from Chapters. Uh, they didn't ship it because it went out of stock immediately, and then um, they took about a month and couldn't, couldn't fulfill the order, and then they canceled the order, even my pre-order, which I got a really good price on, um, and I emailed them because it said it was back in stock immediately after they canceled my order, and I said, you know, I prefer to get the book now, it's in stock, even though you canceled my order literally like an hour ago, um, can you send it to me now at the price that I got originally was going to pay for it, and thankfully, 
Uh, the people with chapters, I've always had good customer service from them in terms of if they've made a mistake on my order or, um, yeah, I've always had good, good customer service from them, which is why I continue to buy from them. Um, and so, yeah, they got me to reorder the book, uh, and then they just refunded me. Um, I paid for it full price and then they just refunded me the balance of, because I ordered it initially, pre-ordered it at like $17 off the initial or the actual full price. And so uh, they refunded me that $17 and honored the initial pre-order price uh, for me, which was really nice of them. And I'm happy that that worked out because that is one I was literally waiting for. And I was so upset when it went out of stock and they didn't ship it and I had to wait over a month. And then finally, and then they canceled it and I was even more upset. But yeah, it all worked out. Next, Otherworld Barbara, another huge hardcover. This one's by Fanagraphics Books, Moto Hagio title, the only one uh, that I've read. I've not read anything else by Moto Hagio. Um, I'd love to read Heart of Thomas, but it's out of print, and I know I should have bought it before, and I kept looking at it, and then I just never did, and now it's out of print, but I'm sure I'll find it someday. This one's a really intricate, interlocking different sh stories and perspectives. It's a sci-fi story, and I have not read Volume 2 yet, so... Um, <clears throat> I don't know how it ends. I don't know if it's amazing at the end. I'm sure it is based on the first volume. So here's volume two, and I haven't read it yet, like I said, but I am looking forward to it. I also bought the Nazca of the Valley of the Wind box set. Um, I'm not going to take these out. There are many b videos showing this box set. Uh, I haven't read it yet. I am excited to. It's one I've wanted for a while, and finally, I got a really, really good deal on it. So, yeah, very heavy. And then... I got the entire series of Rosario Vampire in the Viz box set. This is all 24 volumes. You got 1 through 10 of season 1 and then 1 through 14 of season 2. And it also comes with a little art book. Again, I don't think I need to show every single volume. There are many videos unboxing this on YouTube uh, and this video is already quite long. So. Super happy to have it. I read this series, at least the first like seven or eight volumes of it when I was about 13 years old uh, from my local library. And then I've always wanted to go back to it. It's a harem and it's about a boy, human boy, ends up at a monster high school. Um, not something I would pick up today in terms of just like, if it was brand new today, I, I wouldn't buy it. But it is nostalgic because I did start reading it when I was much younger and I was enjoying it. And even though it's not necessarily my style today, I am on volume seven, I think, and I'm I'm loving it. And so I'm happy to have it. Well, that's everything I've picked up in the month of October. So if you've seen anything that you want me to talk about, let me know. If you read any of these, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.